Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? Can believers in limited government unite against the chosen candidate of the Republican establishment? Tonight, small government versus Mitt Romney. Yesterday on Fox and Friends, South Carolina Republican Senator Jim DeMint stated that a debate within the Republican Party between traditionalists, who are conservatives who want to use the government to make their values the law of the land, and libertarians, who are conservatives who want the government out of the way so people can choose their own values, is a good debate and one worth having. Then he added that a debate within the Republican Party with those who want to grow the government is not a debate worth having because we cannot financially afford or constitutionally tolerate any more growth in government. I think Senator DeMint is onto something here. We're at a crossroads in our history. Most of us are sick and tired of too much government. And we must reject those Republicans who preach small government, but when they are elected, just expand the government into their version of big government. That's what George W. Bush did. He fought two wars on a credit card. He had the feds take over education and prescription drugs for seniors. He added two trillion to the government's debt. He assaulted the Constitution by letting federal agents write their own search warrants. And he borrowed money from the Chinese and gave it to Wall Street in TARP and other failed stimulus programs. And by doing this, and doing it while claiming to be a conservative Republican, he destroyed the meaning of that term. There is nothing conservative about the manner in which he governed. But there is something establishment about it. The word establishment gets used quite often these days on conservative talk radio and cable TV. And many people wonder, what is the establishment? Who are these people? Are they the elites and the patricians? And if so, what does that make the rest of us? The establishment is another word for the big government Republicans. That would be the same folks who brought us all the government growth and debt and loss of freedom during the Bush presidency. Here's an example. When Ronald Reagan ran in the GOP primaries against President Ford in 1976, the establishment opposed him and Reagan lost. When Ronald Reagan ran in the GOP primaries against George H.W. Bush in 1980, the establishment opposed him and Reagan won. You see, the establishment always sides with the candidate who is least likely to rock the boat and most likely to keep them, the establishment, in power. The establishment candidate this year is Mitt Romney. He's the big government guy. He likes government and wants to expand it under the guise of improving it. Enter Congressman Ron Paul. He's the only Republican candidate for president who truly will shrink the government. He's the only Republican candidate who will keep the government from adding to its debt. Keep your money from losing its value. Keep our troops from fighting meaningless wars. And keep the government within the confines of the Constitution. He is also the only Republican candidate intellectually honest enough to defend his opponents when they are unjustly attacked. Case in point. Before the big government, Mitt Romney was a politician. He was a very successful businessman. He and his partners bought and sold businesses, and they created wealth and jobs. In creating wealth, Romney made some businesses smaller, but more efficient. His new businesses made better products and made them less expensive than they had been before he bought and restructured those businesses. And for this, some Republicans like Newt Gingrich and Rick Perry have attacked him. Their attacks on Mitt Romney as a heartless vulture capitalist backfired when Congressman Ron Paul unexpectedly defended Governor Romney and schooled both Gingrich and Perry on the importance of choice in the free market. Governor Perry, unable to understand the difference between capitalism, which is the freedom to invest, purchase and choose, and corporatism, which is government picking winners and losers in the marketplace, must have felt very strange trying to defend his remarks that made him and Newt Gingrich sound more like Occupy Wall Street socialists than free market sound money conservatives. But Governor Romney's monetary policies are not intended to grow the economy. He is no champion of free market capitalism because he believes that the banks are too big to fail and TARP and stimulus are the right things to do. Ron Paul's, Ron Paul's policies to audit the Federal Reserve and rein it in have put him on the map as the only man who can take on Mitt Romney from the right and unite social conservatives and Tea Partiers and libertarians, even civil liberty loving Democrats and independents to beat Barack Obama. Ron Paul has already demonstrated 
that he is the bridge between restoring trust from ordinary Americans and their government so that we may once again have a government that will leave us alone. From New York, 